Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythmic action game that released out of nowhere last month and it's really good. Good enough that I felt compelled to make this video as an excuse to just gush about the game. So let's look at some easter eggs and fun facts in Hi-Fi Rush. Note that there will be spoilers. In Hi-Fi Rush, you play as a wannabe rock star named Chai, who visits Vandalay Industries with the hope of partaking in the Project Armstrong. It's an initiative that supposedly aims to enhance the masses with cybernetic implants. However, things go wrong, and as the game unfolds, we're introduced to a colorful cast of characters. On the enemy side is Reika, Zanzo, Mimosa, Corsica, Rockfort, and Kale. On the player side are Chai, Peppermint, 808, Macaron, Cinnamon, and Corsica after she changes sides. Interestingly, almost everyone's name can be connected to some kind of food. There's Chai, Peppermint, and Cinnamon. Corsica is probably a nod to Corsican pear spice, which is apparently a thing. And a macaron is a uh, sweet, it's a French confection often prepared with some kind of cream or jam filling. The only non-food name for our heroes is 808. She's actually named after the Roland TR-808 rhythm composer, a well-known drum machine. Down here. All right, so I'll keep this quick. No, this is 808. And it looks like she's taken a liking to you. By the way, shout outs to the Hi-Fi Rush TV Tropes page, which is where I found some of the food-related info. So Reka in Japanese means inferno or raging fire. Also, Rekka ramen is a type of spicy ramen seasoned with chili powder. And also, a Rekka is a common term in fighting game communities. It was coined by Fei Long's signature Rekaken move, which first appeared in Super Street Fighter 2, which all fits quite well for Rekka the character. Zanzo might be named after Sanzo, a self-described Asian-inspired sparkling water brand that received some major funding back in 2020, but I'm not sure how popular it's been since. Still, the name is close and it's food-related. Bonus fun fact, Zanzo is a big old reference to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Who's this guy? That's the head of R&D, Zanzo. He runs the whole branch from the AI labs. Mr. Chai, was it? Ha! Well, it's quantity. I want, and now I take you down! As well as straight up having the menacing onomatopoeia appear around him, which is an iconic recurring visual in the JoJo series. And while I didn't make the connection myself, the TV Tropes page points out that he has a bunch of cardboard standees across his department, like JoJo stands. Whatever. Back on topic, Mimosa is named after the cocktail of the same name, often made with uh, champagne and orange juice. Rockfort shares his name with a sheep milk cheese from southern France. And Kale, of course, shares his name with the plant, a type of cabbage. In an interview hosted by the website Games Hub, Hi-Fi Rush's game director John Johannes talked about how the game came to be, including what inspired it. Like the interviewer says, Hi-Fi Rush feels like a game from the early 2000s, and this was apparently a constant decision, and it was even in their pitch document. They used Jet Set Radio, Beautiful Joe, Okami, and other games from that sort of Dreamcast and Xbox era to help shape their title. Along with that, they used Edgar Wright's work, quote, as an example of that sort of kinetic action and comedy feel. Along with the visual and tonal similarities to those works, there were a few notable moments in the game that were most definitely on purpose, like when Chai is getting dressed at the start of the game, the sequence is similar to Edgar Wright's Scott Pilgrim vs. the World scene uh, where Scott is getting dressed, including the difficulty putting on the shoes. And at the start of track 2, Chai pops up out of a manhole, does a pose, lands, and says, I'm here, baby. Who are you talking to? Huh? Which reminds me of that one guy's catchphrase. Head to the go -go, baby! Bonus fun fact, the lead game designer of Hi-Fi Rush is Masaki Yamada, who is the game director of Beautiful Joe 2. When heading into track 10, there is an extended sequence of Chai coming up with a plan while sitting on the couch under a spotlight. He comes up with the brilliant idea to shoot himself out of a fireworks cannon that is located on the roof of the production building. It then hard cuts to the roof where we get this bit. What a wild battle! I wish you could have seen it. I can't believe you survived that! That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen! Yeah! Hey, let's never mention this again. So, two things here. In the previously mentioned Games Up interview, Johannes confirmed that there was indeed a level that was cut here, and he wanted to make it obvious to the player. Additionally, he apparently suggested and even pleaded that they take the planning scene as an opportunity to pay homage to one of his favorite games, Xenogears. 
Johannes even got the approval of Square Enix, which is why the shots are so similar. Personally, I had no knowledge that the sequence was a reference when I first saw it, but I think it worked quite well as a sort of final calm before the climactic couple levels. Another fun moment can be seen after Chai is knocked out and captured at the end of track 4. Talking to the members of the hideout results in a lot of positive, flattering comments. They are, like, really, really proud of Chai's confidence, bravery, intelligence, and so on. When he goes to the couch to start the next level, we get this scene set to music where the character starts snapping. Apparently, this is a reference to Twin Peaks, specifically the otherworldly Red Room that FBI agent Dale Cooper visits in a dream, I think? And it's the man from another place, according to uh, Wikipedia, speaks backwards but forwards and at one point dances, which is what 808 is emulating. It's a whole thing, but it's a neat callback. Now, if we're talking about inspirations and references, we have to talk about No Straight Roads. If you don't know, No Straight Roads is another action-adventure game where music and rhythm play a huge part. It was developed by Metronomic and released in August of 2020. As soon as Hi-Fi Rush was announced and released, plenty of comparisons were made, and many players wondered if it was inspired or influenced by No Straight Roads, or NSR for short. Notably, many saw the globe centerpiece at the start of Track 8 and thought it quite similar to the globe in the center square of Vinyl City from NSR. At the same time, the music director for NSR bought the game and started playing and streaming it, obviously a fan of these kind of games. Near the end of his stream, he acknowledges the comparisons between the two games and states that if Tango Gameworks were inspired by NSR, then it's a huge honor. He was also very upfront about the possibility that they weren't inspired, but either way stressed that there is no hard feelings towards Hi-Fi Rush's positive response and the game as a whole. That said, in an interview with Johannes and Southeast Asian video game site KKP, he was asked about No Straight Roads, and according to him, uh, No Straight Roads was brought up when Hi-Fi Rush was already in development with the gameplay solidified. It was asked if they should check out No Straight Roads, but Johannes said that they shouldn't let NSR influence what they're doing because they didn't want to copy, one-up, or otherwise play off of NSR. Additionally, when asked about the centerpiece at the start of Track 8, the point of reference was actually the globe scene at Universal Studios of Japan, meant to help evoke the feel of a theme park, which makes sense considering that in-game, you can see a ferris wheel and fireworks off in the distance. Juan Hasmer, co-founder of Metronomic and game director of No Straight Roads, took to Twitter on January 28th and stated that, in fact, No Straight Roads and Hi-Fi Rush are similar but fundamentally different in design, going on to explain that while a lot can be learned from the design of Hi-Fi Rush, if they do make NSR 2, then they will stick to the first game's fundamentals. His other tweets along with the tweets from the official No Straight Roads account have been overwhelmingly positive towards Hi-Fi Rush, the game, and its positive response. So yeah, I hope that clears up any confusion on the matter because uh, I've seen more than a few articles with No Straight Roads and Hi-Fi Rush being uh, brought up, so there you go. Onwards, after beating the game, you can of course go back and replay all of the levels. This means you can utilize your ally abilities to get collectibles and whatnot that you couldn't before. Additionally, there is one part where you can technically sequence break. So, during Mission 3, near the end, you're forced to fight a Zanzo original wielding Z shielding. Without a way to break it, Chai gets punched out of the room, through multiple walls, and ends up meeting Macaron. Boom, instant friendship. When replaying the level, if you summon Macaron and then defeat the enemy, you get this dialogue from Cinnamon and Peppermint. Yeah, this Mr. Chai. Some Macaron has yet to join you. This is cheating. <laughs> This messes everything up. Do not be afraid. I will activate the cutscene as usual. Now here's a bunch of fun stuff that I don't know how to organize. As Chai is looking down into Corsica's office from the vent, we can see that she has an article open on her computer titled Top 5 Ways to Make Your Boss Happy. Additionally, when Chai and Peppermint are in Rekka's office looking at the Spectre file, the bottom half of the description has some tongue-in-cheek wording. In subsequent shots, this text is replaced with a tutorial on how to brew coffee with the pour-over method. That said, coffee plays a prominent role in Hi-Fi Rush, kinda. There's a lot of offhand comments from characters both human and robot alike talking about their love of coffee or complaining about the machines 
having issues and only producing decaf. Finally, some peace and quiet. Someone get me a Cortado. Uh, coffee machine's only putting out decaf, sir. What? Turns out a text log you can find in track 4 is titled Disgruntled Decaf Revenge. It's written by anonymous worker who is expected to adjust the coffee machine's firmware but was stationed in a secluded rock section behind a waterfall. This leads them to change the new firmware update so the machines will only pump decaf. It's so devious, I love it. Another interesting log can be found inside the super secret Spectra hub room unlocked after completing all of the Spectra door challenges scattered throughout the levels. It's an email and response between Zonzo and Kale. Zonzo says that he has an idea, explaining that if they ever find alien DNA, they could implant it into a person by injecting them in the eye, giving them cool alien superpowers. Kale is appalled by this idea, but doesn't say anything about the possibility of finding or obtaining alien DNA, which is interesting. While this might be a coincidence, I'm reminded of the gruesome scene from Dead Space 2, in which our main man Isaac undergoes a deadly LASIK treatment to receive some alien-based information, not superpowers. One other thing, this might be a stretch, but during the cutscenes that accompany the initial credits at the end of the game, this shot of the crew in the truck struck me as oddly familiar. I went and checked, and yeah, it's very, very similar in composition and kind of setting to this shot from episode 5 of the anime FLCL or Fooly Cooly. Now, this might seem crazy, but hear me out. Beyond the obvious similarities in composition and having a truck driven left to right along a canal, the anime FLCL features a mysterious corporation named Medical Mechanica, which is behind a number of crazy robots showing up. Additionally, the guitar is a recurring object, being used for music as well as combat throughout. So, I mean, it's super possible that there is no connection here and I'm crazy, but what if? I, I just had to share. Back to more tangible facts, have a fun one. There are 24 pieces of graffiti spread across the game, the artist for which goes unknown until you revisit track 7 with Corsica. It turns out that the artist is a limited collector's edition model of the smart fridge named Pmidge. Oh, that was you? Making all those drawings around the campus? Drawings? No, 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 no! That is art! Just like this, right here. Hey, Corsica, that's you! Pimidge will visit the hideout once all 24 works of art have been found. His masterpiece that he paints on the floor is of Chai as a banana. Who even gave you permission to draw on our floor? Draw! Draw! This is art! Perhaps you'd like me to teach you about it. Uh, no. Forget I asked. But this has nothing to do with us. Can you draw a cool portrait of us or something? I draw what I see, and this is what you get but I don't want it. Despite the worries from Chai about what Peppermint might think, this mural doesn't elicit any extra dialogue, but it is a fun visual reward for the effort. Also in the hideout, after beating the game, you unlock the ability to purchase and equip cosmetics by talking to Cinnamon. If you hang around on any of the characters for too long, they will eventually break their pose and stretch, revealing that they're just staying very still. This even applies to 808s and Cinnamon, despite them being actual robots. Related to that, Cinnamon has a lot of fun costume options like a hot dog suit, but rarely gets to show up during active gameplay. Still, he does get his own hero moment in the second to last mission. Afterwards, he is a bit damaged, which means he can't wear the suit, but Tango Gameworks made sure to have him hold a hot dog. And then in the following mission, after defeating Kale, Cinnamon can be seen with mustard and ketchup on his faceplate. I was curious, so I went and swapped Cinnamon to his chicken outfit, and after rebattling Kale again, he can be seen holding a nest with eggs and a newly hatched chick. I wouldn't be surprised if other Cinnamon costumes have a similar attention to detail in these missions, so if you know, let me know in the comments below. Now, as we approach the end of the video, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, snails. If you look closely, you can find this black and green snail in multiple locations throughout the game. There might actually be one in every single level, but I only have confirmed sightings in six of the levels. If you have any sightings in the other levels than what I'm about to list, make sure to comment them down below. 
In Track 2, after your first combat with the grappling hook available, you can drop onto the moving containers to find the side room with a data log and snail. This one seems to have uh, grown frustrated by the floating music notes. I'm not sure about Track 3. In Track 4, after destroying the lens in the first AR room, if you turn around and look on the floor, you can find this snail enamored by a hologram version of itself. At the start of track 5, if you turn around and go back into that room, you can see the snail idly bouncing a ball against the wall. As for track 6, I'm not sure. In track 7, the snail seems to be running as fast as it can, which is getting it nowhere quick. The last in-level snail sighting that I know of is in track 8, but real quick. So you can actually see the snail in the background of the first cutscene when Chai is checking in and speaking to Lucille. There is also a snail on the card hanging from the truck's rear view mirror during the final cutscenes, as well as a snail on the magazine that appears in the hideout, I think after you have beaten the game. There is also a snail in the model for pigeons in the model viewer, as well as a model named Tango-chan, which costs a staggering 60 Vandalay tickets. This niche reward turns out to be a little diorama of Tango-chan in front of a brick wall alongside an ornate mirror. Going back to the topic of the snail during track 8, a history lesson, you can take a left at the museum's lobby to find this darkened hallway. On a stack of boxes is Tango-chan, who gets sucked into a small ornate mirror. This is a reference to The Evil Within, where the player can access a safe haven using certain mirrors, which is always accompanied by the famous musical tune, Claire de Lune. Another direct reference to The Evil Within can be found in just about every single level, aka these two robots. They're apparently HR investigators Seb-AAA and JSF-001, which are based on Sebastian and Joseph from The Evil Within. That's it, the wake up call I need. Fun fact, the Sebastian robot is actually voiced by Roger Craig Smith, who among other things is the current main voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. All of Sebbot's dialogues are quite fun, but they do go on for a bit, so I'll include it here before we head into the outro, so sit back and enjoy those if you want, or not, it's up to you. Either way, thank you for watching. You wake up in the morning thinking you can change things, but I know the truth. The gears grinding this world are bigger than one can change direction. What can I change? The small stuff, the little things. HR, am I really here for them or for you? The line's too blurry to see. You were right all along, partner. Keep it simple, don't get too involved. And so we start another day. Can anything really change? Can I heal their pain? It's what they want me to do, but the only way to see the big picture is to not look at all. I think you need coffee. Bigger, stronger. Is this promo for RECA or motivation for the rest of us? I'm trying to make this a better place to work and look at you showing off. Is this an HR matter? Figures you don't see it. You think this encourages them? Nah, it's just a reminder. You don't have what it takes. The workers here need to know they ain't ever getting out of that hole they dug themselves into. This world is sick, dark, sad. But we are supposed to help. Help? Impossible. We just mask the reality, give an illusion we care. We can't change anything. The cards are stacked too high against us. This poster stays. It says the truth. Another day, another mess that needs to be cleaned up. The cost of progress, it looks like. This is gonna be bad for morale. Can't see anybody liking this. Surprised no one put a claim in, but I need to take this to the top. We need bigger disposal chutes. These get clogged too easily. Someone might trip on these things, get hurt, can almost see the lawsuit. There is so much oil. You're damn right. And all this oil means one slippery slope. But I'll get on top of this. This is what it comes to. Hiding what we want in caves, away from those who want it. Not only that, but making them struggle to earn it. In this case, even destroying. Things need to change. We need to stop hiding our rewards. But what is a reward if it is not earned? You're right, little guy, like you always are. Maybe this is the way to go. The struggle makes us stronger. A new pitch, make rewards even harder to earn. That sweat, those tears, that makes the cake even sweeter. I'm gonna fast track this one, make the real fighters earn the big bucks. Look at this, partner, an oasis in the dirt, a real place to concentrate. Been right in front of my eyes this whole time. Workers want peace and quiet. 
all these ducts, all this unused space. The future office. There are rats. A small price to pay. Gonna propose this to the board and get the ball rolling. Look at this. Zanzo's out of stock and Roquefort's piling up. I tell ya, you want equality, start with the drinks. We all know the world's stacked against us. But sometimes we need a drink to forget. I'm talking about these drinks. Shows who's in charge. Becomes a goal. Last thing we want is some of us thinking we don't have a shot. Even though we know we don't, we want to pretend. Like I have to pretend. Like I care about these cases. Like I care about our workers. But I'm just trying to make ends meet. Just lay down at the end of the day without a cloud over my head. You taking notes on this, bud? I will contact the supply chain. Do it like we're supposed to, not like we want to. This world's stone cold, bud. Better drink something warm. Just look at it. Quite the spectacle. Should really get this place checked out. Someone may get hurt. But sometimes I think someone should get hurt. Only way to spark some change. No one wants to make the first move. They only take the first steps when it's too late. Why do we do this to ourselves? It's a vicious cycle. And I'm supposed to be the resource to help people? Ha! <laughs> I only clean up the mess. And what a mess this one is. We avoided perilous injury. Should be thankful. Or maybe I should have felt some pain. Maybe it would have helped me to try to help. Now, there's always another day. Keep it up, kid. Might make me wake up from this nightmare. You found me, kid. Taking a break. Taking my eyes off the prize. So what now? You gonna bust me? This is the wanted defect. Mutually assured destruction. He turns us in, he'll spill the beans on our break. I believe there is a reward. I won't do it. I don't stab someone in the back. Especially this kid. He knows what he's doing. So go on, run off. Try to escape this cruel world. It'll only pull you back in. Okay, outro time. Big thanks to my channel members for their support, and a mega corporation size thanks to Captain Crayfish for being a super fan. I really enjoyed this game, so this was a fun video to make, and hopefully it was a fun one to watch. If you watched this far, thank you, but also, why not consider subscribing or checking out some of my other content? That's it for this one. Goodbye.